What's up? I'm Chris Barnes, linebacker with the Green Bay Packers, and you're listening to Cleese Off Podcast with Liz Bandari. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cleats Off Podcast. I'm your host, Liz Bandari, and this is a show that brings you closer to the game you love. Today's guest is Chris Bond, linebacker for the Green Bay Packers. He went undrafted in 2020, but was the team's top inside linebacker by the end of the year. We discuss leadership styles, the shift from college to NFL, and life in Green Bay. Enjoy the show. Now, let's start with chatting about the draft. Like, what was it like during those last few rounds whilst you were waiting to hear for your name to be called? Like... Were there teams calling you to tell you that they were targeting you, um, you know, that they wanted to sign you as an undrafted free agent? What was the process like at the end of the draft when it, you know, when it was coming to a close? Um, yeah, it was definitely, a, you know, a stressful process to go through that whole little um, situation as far as the draft and, um, you know, not having an uncertainty of not knowing, you know, where I was going to go, if someone was going to call or, or whatnot, but, you know, having conversations with my agent and uh, him kind of letting me know, kind of gave me the foresight that there was a possibility that, that I wasn't going undrafted. Um, so I kind of already had that in my head. Um, so when that time came, um, I kind of had an idea of where I wanted to go, a couple of teams that were already interested, that were calling me at the end of the seventh round saying, you know, hey, um, I don't think we're going to draft you, but, you know, when the, when, the, when the time comes, we do want to pick you up in our free agency. So, um, you know, when that time did come, I was able to make my choice pretty fast. And, um, you know, I'm thankfully to be here with the Green Bay Packers. Absolutely. And um, your UCLA teammate, Josh Woods, he called you the glue that mm-hmm. kind of held the team together with your leadership. Um, what kind of leader would you describe yourself as? Like, are you a big talker? Are you more that like lead by example and kind of like your play that you're talking? Or is it like a combination of all of those styles? Um, you know, I'm, I'm still <clears throat> trying to figure out my role as far as a leader. Um, you know, I'm not the most vocal guy. I'm not going to come out, you know, have that pregame speech or um, that whole pump up thing. But, you know, I, I do try to lead a lot by this example and by my play. You know, I try to go out there and give it all for my guys and um, let that show and let it be infectious that, you know, just, you know, they, them be able to see me fly around, make a couple of plays that it might get them juiced up, might, might be able to, you know, exp- get that spark for the team. So um, I'm still developing that, you know, that quality of being a, a true leader. So um, there's a lot, a lot of room for me to grow for sure. Amazing. And how big of a shift is it for like a linebacker in college when it comes to like the NFL, especially given that college teams, you know, tend to run more, whereas the NFL seems to be more of like a, I guess, a, a passing league, if you will. Um, yeah, there's definitely, you know, a difference as far as, you know, just how the game is played, the speed of it, uh, the physicality of it. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of variables that, you know, go into the differences of it. Um, but, you know, for me, I think there's a big um, thing for me that as far as I just, you know, kind of let go and just play. Um, the calls are calls. The schemes kind of, you know, end up being kind of the same over the course of all your learning. It's just new terminology. So um, just the quicker you can apply those terms and, you know, get out there and, you know, just trust the people around you. Um, you know, it, it makes your job a lot easier, for sure. And are there any areas of your game that you feel that have really benefited and developed thanks to kind of having, I guess, to practice against one of the best quarterbacks in the league on a, a regular basis? Yeah, I mean, we practice one against one of the best office, offices in the league. So it's definitely every day you step on the field, every play you're getting better, um, just as far as, you know, um, little things that Aaron Rodgers has seen as far as, um, you know, little checks that he might make at the line allows us to kind of, um, step our game up in that area, um, you know, kind of get those pre-snap clues and uh, get our eyes and our mind right, you know, before each and every play. So it's definitely good to be able to go against this um, our offense, especially for me as a young player, uh, to be able to develop so fast because you have to go against this offense. So, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm excited to be here. I'm definitely excited to go against this offense, be a part of this defense, be a part of this team, and just, you know, take each day in itself and just continue to grow. And let's talk about the Kenneth Washington Award. Now, given, you know, how significant a figure that he is in American football history, um, is and was even. So how did that feel to be presented with that award, especially with, I guess, how many distinguished players have had that award previously? Um, it's a huge honor. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot of things that, you know, he's brought to the game that we still try to, you know, establish today in this game. So, um, you know, for me to be able to, you know, win that, it was a, it was a great honor. Um, you know, I try to pride myself on being the best I can be every time I'm on the field. 
uh, continue to try to be that leader like you like you guys spoke of and just try to be the best I could be all around. Um, and that's I think that's what I think that that whole honor, uh, that whole trophy and enca- encapsulizes. So uh, for me to be able to win that, it was, it was definitely an honor. Now, the Green Bay Packers are the only team that the UK fans have yet to kind of see in person in London. Is playing in another country an experience you'd personally like to have? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yes, most definitely. Um, and, you know, growing up, I've seen you know, a couple of teams play across the country in different places. So, you know, I know I don't, I don't know, really know how all that goes, how it gets planned. But, you know, hopefully one day, you know, I would love to be out there in a different country, probably in the U.K., uh, you know, to show, show the sport or show UK what the sport's all about and um, what the Green Bay Packers are all about. So hopefully sometime in the future, sometime soon, uh, we can get that worked out. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Packers are in a unique kind of place in the NFL, you know, due to like its ownership structure. Mm-hmm. But how special is that relationship between like the people of Green Bay and the team itself? Um, it's definitely special. I think especially for me coming from uh, UCLA where you're in Los Angeles and you know, a, lot, a lot of people don't really care about football. I mean, they do, but you don't get that feel of it being a football city, uh, but coming here to green Bay, I mean, this is the community. They, they bring you in with such open arms. Um, they still give you your space to, to know like, okay, you, you feel free to go anywhere. Um, there's love everywhere you go. They come to every game practice, whatever it might be. And they're showing full support. Uh, it'll be sold out for a practice. So it's like, Wherever we go, you know, they're going to be there supporting us. And um, we're definitely, definitely glad to have him back this year. <laughs> and does the, the town just have like this, this special aura on game day, given obviously, I suppose, its size compared to other places? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, last year was, was tough not being able to experience it. So it's still it's still an experience for me. It's, it's going to be my first home game, uh, seeing this, the Lambeau field fully packed out. So see the whole game game environment pulling in, seeing the fans on the side before I pull into the facility. So I'm definitely ex- excited for it, uh, ready for it. Uh, it's going to be a good feel to have the fans back in the stadium, have a rocking on a Monday Night Football. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a, lot of, a lot of good things to come for sure. Absolutely. And one tradition that I love to see each year is kind of the one where the players ride the children's bicycles down Dream Drive uh, to the practice. Like what what does that mean to you? Um, it's just a special thing that, you know, I think as far as tradition that goes on here, being able to hop on a bike and spend that couple of little seconds with um, some of the kids and um, even some of the fans. You know, it's just it's an interaction that I, I guess most most teams might not have. So. For us, it, it can make a kid's lifetime. It can make a fan's lifetime. You never know what they're going through. So for us, just to spend a couple of seconds out of our day riding a bike, walking with them, whatever it might be, it's just it's something that's good for both of us. You know, we get to interact with the fans, build a relationship, and continue to grow as a community, and continue to grow as a, you know, just an organization. Amazing. Chris, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Uh, best of luck for the season ahead and, you know, the incredible future in front of you. Perfect. Appreciate you. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of years, like we said, UK, we coming. <laughs> Appreciate <laughs> <Can't> you. <wait. laughs> well, that's it for another episode of the Cleats Off podcast. As always, I'd love your comments and feedback. So feel free to reach out to me at NFL Girl UK across Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. I wouldn't want you to miss a single episode. Until then, thanks for listening.